Today is Thursday, October 7th, 2021. Welcome into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. Coming up, we've got last night's Super Dirt Week results, including yet another win for Matt Williamson. We've also got details on the future of Super Dirt Week, plus Bernie and KCP Racing have parted ways. Before we get going, if you'd like a free and easy way to support what I'm doing, you can subscribe and follow the show and leave me a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you watch or listen. You can also follow at Dirt Tracker on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And DirtTracker.com is home to a bunch of cool dirt racing content. Now, let's get going. Super Dirt Week kept rolling along last night with Sportsman and 358 modified action at Weed Sports Speedway. And in the 358 race, it was once again Matt Williamson taking down the victory. He battled all race long with Tim Sears Jr. with the two swapping the lead multiple times. In the end, though, Williamson was just too strong. He led the final 11 laps en route to the $4,000 victory, which was his second Super Dirt Week win of the week and third in just six days in a Northeast Modified. With plenty more racing to come, Williamson has now won the Outlaw 200, the Demon 100, and last night's Super Dirt Week kickoff at Weed Sport, and he did it in two different race cars across two different modified divisions. Pretty incredible. I don't know how you don't look at his performance this week and don't think that maybe he's not, or how, how he couldn't be the favorite for Super Dirt Week in the 200 coming up on Sunday. Behind Money Matt, Sears, Larry White, Ronnie Davis III, and Jordan McCready completed the top five. Besides the fact that he's looking to defend his win in the 200 from 2019, Williamson will also be in Saturday night's 150 lap 358 race, an event he has yet to win in his career. If his car is tuned up like it was last night, he'll definitely have a good chance. Today at Oswego will be the first time this week that we have cars on the track at the converted pavement facility. Both the big blocks and 358s have practiced today before qualifying it gets underway later this afternoon. Top six from both qualifying sessions will be locked into the features. And then later tonight, the 358s and sportsmen head over to Brewerton for the Hurricane Harvey 75. Make sure to have your phone or computer locked to Dirt Vision today as all of the action from Oswego uh, is live all day long on Dirt Vision, uh, as is tonight's show at Brewerton. So plenty to watch, plenty to check out all day long from Super Dirt Week. Even if you aren't a Northeast Modified fan, I would definitely recommend jumping in and checking out some of the action this week. This is one of the biggest uh, Northeast Modified races and, and weeks of the season. So good time to jump in and, and see the kind of the regular cast of characters and, and all the big names in attendance all week long. Along with last night's racing, we did get some clarity about the future of Super Dirt Week yesterday. World Racing Group CEO Brian Carter, along with Oswego, New York Mayor Billy Barlow, announced that the event will return to Oswego Speedway in 2022 for the 50th edition. On top of that, Carter said the pieces are in place to keep Super Dirt Week at the track for the next five years. I personally was an employee at World Racing Group when the event transitioned from the fairgrounds in Syracuse to Oswego. And I remember kind of all of the strife and trouble and work that went into trying to find a new venue for that. And then what all of the Northeast folks did in trying to kind of recreate that atmosphere at a different racetrack. If you haven't been to Super Dirt Week before, the kind of moniker that it has always had is that it's racing's biggest party. And, and at the fairgrounds, you had all the campers, people riding around, partying, have a good time. You know, it's it's almost like the racing is secondary. It's almost like a, if you know anything about like the NASCAR races at Talladega, the, the, the racing is almost secondary to all the good times that people are having there. And, and Super Dirt Week was no different. So trying to recreate that atmosphere at a different racetrack has certainly been a challenge. But it's nice to see the event get a little bit of stability going forward and it can kind of continue building that atmosphere there. You can read more about the announcement over at DirtTrackDigest.com. DTD's Bill Foley was at the announcement and did a full write-up, including quotes from the various officials. I think a bunch of us missed this tweet from back on Tuesday because I didn't see the news floating around until yesterday. But Bernie Stubgen posted that he and KCP Racing have parted ways following the National Open at Williams Grove. Bernie, who a lot of sprint car fans will know as the owner of Indy Race Parts and that black and green 71 car, He's been serving as the crew chief for Geo Selzy and the KCP team for much of the season. The team started out 2021 with Tyler Swank on the wrenches, but Bernie took over sometime late February, early March uh, after Swank was released. It's been a bit of an up and down season for Geo and that KCP team. Their biggest one of the season came in the 360 Knoxville Nationals back in August, but they've had mixed results when they've raced against the Outlaws and the All-Stars. In 44 Outlaw appearances in 2021, Gio has 11 top 5s and 25 top 10s with a best finish of 2nd. 
He did that uh, twice, one at Williams Grove in May and one at Beaver Dam in June. He was also second on his Knoxville Nationals prelim night and fourth in the Knoxville Nationals feature on Saturday night. There were also some not-so-great results mixed in there for Geo as well, including this past weekend at Williams Grove. At a racetrack Geo has won at before, he failed to get out of the B-Main on Friday night and was 18th in the big show on Saturday. And the results are similar with the All-Stars. No wins, nine top fives in 23 starts, and some tough nights as well. I think I'm not alone in believing that Gio is a young driver in the sprint car ranks with a very bright future ahead. He's already got wins with both the All-Stars and Outlaws, and that 360 Nationals victory shows he can compete in the big events. And I think this move to full-time sprint car racing with KCP, I, I thought would kind of bear fruit a lot quicker. He he take, takes this opportunity to to return to sprint car racing full-time. He, he kind of started to go the pavement route with Toyota, and he was running some West Series races. But then this season decides to really kind of go all in on sprint car racing. And it just shows that, you know, the, the stats show that this transition back into this and, and running with KCP, that it hasn't been as easy as I, th- as I think some of us thought it would be. And I also know that KCP has gone, you know, has gone through some issues this season. They were one of the teams that was supposed to be running that new Toyota Sprint Car engine. There have been struggles with that, especially early on in the season. So I know that that didn't help things as well. And there's no indication from Bernie's tweet about whose idea this split was. But it's not all that surprising. With Bernie trying to operate his business and his own team, it had to be difficult for him to also try and look after the 18. There were a lot of weekends when he had both the 18 and the 71 out. This last weekend at Williams Grove is a perfect example of that. He's trying to look after two sprint car teams. And in his weekly sprint car top 50, Jeremy Elliott of SprintCarUnlimited.com mentioned that the KCP team will likely not race at Port, uh, Port Royal this weekend with the World of Outlaws as originally planned. Obviously, keep you posted on any news from the team about their crew chief situation going forward. As for Bernie, he had Justin Henderson at the National Open in the 71, and it looks like they are sticking around Pennsylvania this week to run at Port Royal. Uh, Some tweets on his account in that direction. So obviously, as we know more about this stuff, we will certainly keep you posted. But Bernie and the KCP team no longer together. Looking ahead to tomorrow, we'll get you amped up for another busy dirt racing weekend, including shows for Lucas, USAC, the Outlaws are at Port Royal, like I just mentioned. The final All-Star weekend of the season is on tap, and we'll also look at what to watch at Super Dirt Week. There's still uh, plenty of championship battles to watch and plenty of money on the line over the next couple of days as well. One of the things we'll talk about tomorrow, even though it isn't a dirt race, is the Silver Crown finale that's coming up this weekend at Toledo and the very, very tight points battle there. So a lot to come. There are six items on the streaming schedule for today with Dirt Vision leading the way with those two Super Dirt Week shows, one from Oswego and one from Brewerton. Map TV Plus and Race and Dirt both have the first day of the USRA Nationals from Lucas Oil Speedway. Speed Sport has action from Brownstown and there's Flow Racing 24-7. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today. Hope you have a good Thursday. If you have thoughts about the topics on today's show, please leave them in the comments below or tweet at me. Thanks everybody uh, for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.